Good morning, everybody. Um, today's topic is what if you can't sell on eBay? Um, what's your backup plan? And you know, what are you planning on doing if that happens to you? So a um, couple of things. The reason why I want to bring this up is yesterday I had a pretty bad anxiety attack. And I want to go over why I think that happened, what I did to try to um, overcome that. And then another thing is Matt brought up a really good question in the chat, which is if I had to build a five-year plan to build a stronger retirement portfolio using eBay alone, how would I go about that? So essentially, um, this is related because this is all planning, right? Planning what to do if um, you if something happens to you. So I actually had always planned on at some point not selling on eBay anymore. Um, it just I, it, it happened way earlier than I thought because you know at some point you can't list on eBay anymore. So I've already been building other kinds of income. So it was interesting because when I got suspended on eBay, I actually it didn't um, mess me up that much because I just thought to myself, I'll just build another business um, and, I'll, and I'll be fine. Um, but uh, I was talking to my friend yesterday um, about my anxiety attack, and he is a psychologist. Um, and just, just talking to him about why I was having an anxiety attack. And it's it started with, I think I ate something bad. And then that was coupled with high stress. So high stress plus poor diet, I think pretty much guarantees you anxiety for sure, right? Everyone goes through this. So try to, you know, if you can reduce stress and um, eat better foods. But the the anxiety for me always comes from physical illness. This year has been rough. I've had gout. I've had COVID. Um, when my daughter started childcare, um, whatever she brought back was way worse than COVID. So um, I've been sick actually a lot this year. So it made me think about physical illnesses, uh, illnesses. And when I got sick, those all felt worse than um, worse than me being suspended on eBay. Way worse because I couldn't do anything. I was just laying, not feeling well. And then yesterday during the anxiety attack, all I did was, well, I so I, I didn't feel well. So I went to bed at like eight o'clock at night, woke up at nine with like a small fever, like maybe 101. Um, and then at that point, I didn't sleep at all. So um, I, I tried everything. I like walked around, I did stretching, I took a bath, I took a few showers, had some tea. Um, I couldn't figure out what was, I just kept thinking, what if I can't work? So my friend told me to write down all the things that would potentially happen if I can't work, because that's how you can kind of um, deal with it. So I currently have $6,000 a week in payroll. Okay, so other people rely on me to pay their bills. So that's that's stressful because I think about, okay, if I don't go to work and I can't run these companies, they don't get paid. That's not good. Um, then my personal expenses are $8,797 a month. That's pretty high. Um, it's because I have two mortgages. So that's a lot. I want to have another baby at some point. Um, but that comes with a lot of extra bills, more childcare. And also there's, there's more work. I don't think that two babies is the same amount of time as one baby. So less time, more work. So I became a homeowner this year. We did a bunch of renovations. Also became a landlord this year. So lots of stuff um, I've been thinking about. And I think it helped me a lot just writing it all down yesterday, all the things that I'm worried about. And I think in my brain, if I can't work, I essentially fail all of these things. That's why I... Um, was having such so much anxiety. So yesterday, um, I didn't have any coffee. And I'm not sure I need coffee. I like coffee, but I don't know if it really, um, I need it. So I think coffee increases anxiety. So maybe I, I will, I don't, I don't drink that much coffee to begin with, but coffee, um, alcohol, these things really um, take a toll. So, um, oh, Linda does decaf, great idea. I'm going to write that down. That's a really good one. I'll have decaf. Okay. So um, 
yeah so anxiety basically comes from if i don't go to work then it's messed up so um the only thing that i struggled with yesterday because i have kind of a um sore throat is and i don't have covid i checked again i know people who've gotten it twice i don't i don't have it again but um i have trouble drinking water when my, my throat is sore so i need to figure out a way to drink more water because um being hydrated is big also yesterday i only ate chicken soup with rice man that is such a tasty meal and it made me feel better so um i think if you can cut down on that it'll really help with um anxiety so now back to the topic of um Matt had asked if I had to build a five-year retirement plan, a retirement portfolio using eBay alone, how would I go about this? So maybe everyone should have the same goal as tech because I had asked him, how would he set up a business where, um, thank you, Dylan, um, where he wouldn't have to run it and it could produce an income. So he came up with the plan of two people, um, each listing 50 a day so 100 a day was it 100 a day it might have been 50 a day yeah it was 100 a day so 700 listings a week um 100 a day two people working a stagger schedule so they work all seven days so they can cover the shipping and if one of them doesn't come, the business still goes, just makes a little bit less money. But if you only have one person and they don't come, then it messes up your store. So two people. And then you would need to figure out supply for them. So if you had a five-year plan to build a retirement portfolio with eBay, what I would do is make eBay into an asset that generates money for you. So two people, listing, shipping, photographing a day, shipping, photographs listing every day and um let's see then you would need to figure out you have to procure the supply for them you would need a supplier maybe a buyer so you if you you could do that in five years no problem so then essentially if something happens to you then um your ebay business still generates an income for you and in the meantime during the next five years you need to build up savings and you also need to um, potentially think of other streams of income. So if I, if I ideally, I think your your portfolio would be a mix of um, index funds, real estate, and a couple of businesses. That way you have income coming in in case the um, stock market is messed up and you don't have to sell your stock. Is it worth building an eBay account selling items with really small profit? It depends on what you think small profit is. So we're, we're live on YouTube today. So um, I'll answer questions in the chat also. Um, I think so. I think that small profit items, I would consider a dollar a profit. That's pretty small, but you got to start somewhere. Um, Zach says schedule 15 to 30 minutes a day for meditation. So Two days ago, I had the panic attack. I slept zero. Yesterday, I slept eight hours straight. I mean, I, maybe I got lucky, but I slept amazing last night. Um, and what I was trying to do was, in the first maybe half an hour, I still had these same symptoms as two days ago. I was pretty stressed out. Um, and then I was forcing myself to think about this breathing exercise that my um, wife was doing during pregnancy, which is like, we you, you could try it now. Four four second count in, and six second count out, and I just focused on counting. So I've always thought about breathing, but I didn't think about counting. So I was able to focus on one, two, three, four, in five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, out, and eventually forcing myself to count one through ten. I fell asleep, and then I didn't wake up until an hour ago. So that really, really, really worked. So I'm, I'm going to try that form of meditation as well because um, really, really, really helped. Um, manic, depressive, and anxiety attacks here. 
Yeah, I know, right? It can be tough. Um, the mind is a battle, definitely. But I just don't deal with physical problems well at all. I, I literally think like I'm gonna die. Even it's it's like if I could somehow think this will be over in a day to a week, that would be much better. But I, I, for some reason, I don't think that way. And it's not not even my my wife said it's because men are weak physically, so maybe it's gender related. Um, breathing methods calm you down. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Let's see. You have a variety of high and low profit items. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'm trying to mix it up. Catherine, what's up? Well, what if your um, goal isn't to, like, I only sell on eBay. And I've been wondering lately if I should have other platforms that I sell on for the same reason, kind of that you were having anxiety. Like, what if <clears throat> I can't do that anymore? Where's my source of income going to be? But I don't want to go too big because I'm going to retire in four years. So my goal is to just cover my expenses and with a little bit more for fun in the next four to five years. So should I be selling on more than one platform? I don't think so, because you can just start over on another platform. And if you already know what you're doing, it doesn't take very long to build up. But if you diversify on the two platforms, then if you're not if you're not having a full time income on one, then definitely don't diversify. I guess if you're already killing it on one platform, then add another one. But um, I wouldn't hodgepodge two together because what people are doing is they're quilting together all these small incomes. That doesn't work because you never get good at any of them. Like I already, I'm good at reselling, so I can switch to a different platform. So, but if you never, you have to give yourself a chance to get good at the platform. And if you sell on multiple platforms poorly, then I know people who sell on 17 platforms and they make like $2,000 total. Like you can just know. sell on any platform and do that. What proves that you're good at the platform? You make a full-time living. So, okay. If you made a full-time living, right? Like your yeah. bills were $3,000 a month mm -hmm. and you made $3,000 a month profit. Like if you lost your um, eBay income, like, cause when eBay bans you, they don't give you, like you're not getting any extra cash flow from the future, right? Cause you can't sell anything anymore. Mm -hmm. So like now you are going even basically at that point. So you don't have any like extra money to move over to a different platform. So are, yeah, would that, yeah. would you need to be above that? And by how much? Cause like in your case, you had like thousands of dollars saved up from your eBay excursions. Mm -hmm. So how, well, how far do you gotta go? I guess that is, that's another thing that I didn't think of because I focused on one, one platform. I had savings. So I can take a break and think like my wife has always um, saved half her income. So she's changed jobs a couple of times in her life. And in between the jobs, she's taken like three to six months off to think about what to do next. Because if eBay she, herself, she put herself in a position to do that. So that is like, there's going to be a rainy day at some point where you can't, I mean, every job comes to an end at some point, but it's like if you were a plumber, you wouldn't also be like you wouldn't part time be a dentist. It's not related. If you're a decent plumber, you could switch to dentistry. I mean, anyone can switch careers. I don't agree with um, dual platforms because it just doesn't make sense. So to if me. I was in the same position you were in and I got banned suddenly, then like I need to be making money again in the next week. Right. Like, well, not anymore. Probably like two weeks, three weeks at this point. But like before this point, it would be like the next week I'd need to be making money again. So like how far do we need to, and I know that's dependent on each of us individually, but like how set up were you for like, if you got banned, you were able to pivot, you had enough space to pivot. You're muted by the way. 
If you had to make money in the next week or two, you would be screwed. You can't be living that close to the edge. You can't build a business in a week or two. Exactly. That's what like, I'm like if I switched to Poshmark, right? And I listed, um, I don't know, let's say 100 items a day, which is a lot. Actually, it doesn't mean it list like 30 items a day. It would take three months before I started making decent money again. That's me knowing how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, right? You're not a good reseller. It could take you years to build an income back up. So ideally have three months or so for if things go to hell, you can still pay all your bills and buy new inventory. I, ideally a year if you can. Yeah. You can't always, um, you can't always um, have that much, but having a year worth of savings definitely makes you feel better. Like I had a bunch of, after, I mean, I've never gotten so many emails in my life, probably got 5,000 emails after suspended from eBay. People asking me, what am I going to do? Like, cause it's, it was like $200,000 plus a year profit gone. Right. So that's a huge amount of money, but I just thought, you know what, I'm still physically able. I can build another, another business. So I don't know. I didn't, I didn't feel, and, and I, and I didn't have to make money in a week to three weeks. That is a, I get a lot of that. Like, um, for example, somebody will email me today saying I have rent due on September 1st and I want to start eBay. Um, I need $800 in two weeks. It doesn't work. It does not very realistic to do that because it takes three months to build up to a decent amount, even if you know what you're doing. So if you're just starting, it could take several years. But you could make $800 in two weeks, right? But like the person who's sending you that email probably isn't experienced enough on eBay to pull it off. Like it's possible. You can do that, but it's not realistic. I agree. Um, it's usually not realistic to, to um, take several years. You can't replace income that quickly. It's, it takes some time. Neil, what's up? Hi, Chris. Yeah, um, just going back to the five-year plan of somebody exiting in five years. Do you think at the end of the five years, if they had um, a good eBay business, that they would be able to sell that actual business um, as, as in their storage, their stock, their contacts and all that? Do you think, do you think someone would actually be able to buy or to, or, or to sell that kind of business? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, so on the idea of the five-year plan, of someone wanting a five-year exit plan, at the end of that five years, do you think that they would be able to sell their eBay business, their stock, their uh, storage, their contacts, um, and all that? Just, lot, pop, just the, the inventory. Right. So when I got suspended, I had 8,000 items on eBay. So if I just liquidated that, um, I probably could have gotten five bucks a piece if I just liquidated the whole thing. So I could have gotten, I guess, $40,000 to think about my next business um, or just cash out. But I wasn't, I couldn't, like, I can't, I actually, you know, that's a good question, Neil. I could, I could sell my employees, I guess, but I don't know if they would want to work for somebody else. Well, I was actually thinking of the uh, the actual eBay account and the algorithm and the goodwill that you and the uh, reputation you have with the algorithm for uh, uh, being able to sell a certain amount of already having a certain amount of stock already listed. Obviously, if you you know if you have like twenty five thousand items of stock, if you have a new account, it's going to take ages and ages and ages to get there. But if you um, if you were to actually buy an account that already had 25,000, already had hundreds of items going out a day, surely that would be worth quite a lot of money to somebody. No, it doesn't. Because when I started the new account from zero with zero feedback, I was able to get the same sales as my big store in three months. It doesn't matter. As long, I think you need 10 feedback. If you have 10 feedback, 10, if you have 10 quality transactions in a row, I think eBay doesn't matter. Your feedback was, number, if it's like under a hundred, then I feel like maybe a buyer might be worried. But, and if it's under 10, 
if your feedback's under 10, then um, you get a lot of scammers trying to rip you off in the beginning and people like sending you. But what I'm actually getting to, Chris, is how, how, how many items a day were you selling with your large account before you got banned? Uh, let me see. 70 to 100 a day. And how long would it take a new person to get to 70 to 100 a day? It would take me probably starting from scratch again, maybe a year and a half. New person. So, so New wouldn't person. it be worth wouldn't it be worth buying an account that already had that so that you were up and running at 70 to 80 a day instead no, of having because, a year and a half? No, there is no shortcut because the algorithm knows. I, I guess if you had 70 to 100 sales a day and you could just hand over the reins to somebody else and they could list 70 to 100 and just continue it going. I, yeah. I, I don't know if that would work, but because well, the, if you, if you sold your staff that already knew how to do it and somebody was buying the company that had all of your stock, you had your staff that already knew what to do and they were just swapping ownership of the business. I'm not sure that would work. It sounds like it would work on paper. I just don't know because I, I feel like the operation, like now knowing what I know now, I yeah. think if you want a 70 to 100 item store, you would start at zero. You wouldn't, if you were thinking, um, I guess if the only way I would buy an eBay store is if the operator was still there. You, you stepping in as the operator seems very risky to me in a business that you don't really know. Um, you probably need a transition time. I mean, that's a good question because as um, my wife was, suggesting that by the time we end this podcast maybe i'll i mean like in several years from now maybe i'll be in a position that i could buy tech store right Fifty thousand yeah. items and then sell 250 items a day um i don't know i think with what i know now i would rather start over at zero but i i don't know i, I don't think it works because usually when like um let, let me give you another example there's an, if let's say you're an accountant and you have 200 clients and it's Neil, Neil's accounting services and you sell your business to Todd, right? So now it's Todd's accounting services. Obviously some of the people will not want to be um, with the new accountant, but you'll still retain a bunch of them. I think that kind of works, but I don't know. I don't know if, if physical products business can transfer over. Um, yeah, because because this is Scott is saying you would have to have the goodwill with the suppliers. That's true too. The issue is that you're your business. So like if you're not in your business, your business starts to unravel. Like, even though your employees know what they're doing in relation to your business, like they can't do it without you. Like you make sure that everything that they need is in place. Unless you like took one of them and had them shadow you for like half a year and then they learn how to do what you did. So let's say something happened to tech uh, for some reason. And, and um, he, um, he, for some reason, didn't have his eBay account, but um, you wanted to sell yours. Are you saying that tech couldn't come along and take over your account? Um, he would have the know-how. He would have the ability yeah, no, it's a good question. I don't know. Aaron is saying when his dentist retired, he sold his business to a younger guy and kept most of the employees and his whole family still uses that dentist. So it, it is interesting, like, because tech is the top men's clothing seller on eBay. So if he sold it to me, some of the goodwill would go away because it's not him, but certainly some clients would still stay. So that's interesting. If you're buying products from people and you say, well, uh, um, tech, um, I was buying them at this amount and I'm going to, I'm happy to continue buying them at this amount. Why would they not want to sell items to you for, for the same amount? They've still got the same trade. Nothing's changed for them. Still pick up the same time, still go to the same place. Nothing changes. Who wants Most of them probably still would. It's just different. It's just like you're just working with somebody different. You, you, you're going to have some churn. Most people probably would stay, but some people won't because they just like dealing with a certain person. 
So that is a good question. I, I've never thought of, I've never um, seen an eBay store successfully sold without real estate. I, I've seen eBay stores sold that were in a building that the person owned. So it was like um, collateral where in case the eBay business doesn't work, at least they have the building. So, and I've seen tons of eBay. Usually the way the eBay store ends is um, somebody dies and they drive the whole thing to Goodwill or um, they liquidate the inventory or because yeah, people move and they close their eBay stores all the time and they just liquidate it. Facebook marketplace, garage sale. So, you know, I looked at this about a year ago and mm -hmm. the things that, you know, basically I was told is you're absolutely right about the property because what you're selling then is assets, right? A lot of times when uh, a business sells, either it's a client list, it's the uh, inventory, uh, it's the land, it's the property, it's that kind of thing. Not many times uh, particularly in an instance where the previous owner is going to be completely hands off. Not many times do people want to actually just buy it outright uh, because there's just all kinds of potential pitfalls there. I mean, most of your suppliers are all about personal relationship, um, which you're not going to have. I, I get what you're saying, Neil, about having, you know, I mean, who, what do they care as long as, you know, I mean, everything's the same and the money keeps going. But in a lot of time, in a lot of cases, at least, you know, that just doesn't translate. Um, and so for, from my standpoint, you know, like um, what I was looking at selling, it was basically talking about selling the inventory uh, as a whole in a one shot deal. So. Paul, other Paul. Yeah, um, I kind of looked at this a little bit with not just with this, but with different businesses. And uh, <clears throat> the the best model that I, I think I've seen was um, where the, the former owner stays on as a consultant and they work it into the contract. And then also there might be an ongoing stipend for that, for that consultation because there are, there are nuances in, in any business that uh, can make or break that business or, or just kind of put it over the tipping point and decisions that can, that can be made that, you know, depending on like, well, let me change my source, my sourcing or, or whatever. And then that business owner ha has to be there to say, okay, well, this is, we've tried that and this is why it doesn't work. And, you know, so that, that's kind of the only model that I've seen that, that might work. There's people, in the chat saying, there's people in the chat saying they're selling their eBay store with their storage unit. That doesn't, that's, storage unit is not an asset. So that, that I don't, I think the storage system, the inventory system, the account is worth almost nothing. The, the, what I guess what would be worth money is staff, suppliers, and even staff, not super valuable. If you have, unless like the more important part is the process and yeah, I don't know. I think I think the main value of an eBay store is the inventory. If people in the group like struggle with replicating what Tech's doing and what you did as well, then like, how? What would be different about a person trying to come in and buy your business that would allow them to be able to replicate? a thing that a lot of us struggle with replicating. That makes sense? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Like, so many people in the group struggle with replicating what, like there's people who have the desire yeah. to do what you and Tech did, right? But like in actuality, trying to replicate it is difficult. So like what would be different about a person coming in and trying to buy your store and like them having the ability to replicate your same success? So Scott said the institutional knowledge is worth more than the inventory. The institutional knowledge is the most important part. So the reason why people are not able to replicate tech system or my system is they don't understand why they're doing things. So like the reason why you don't want to use a chronological or date-based inventory system is so that it's easier to find items 
And then you can see how that fits into the puzzle. Or the reason that you would photograph flatly on the ground is because you wouldn't have to mess with the hanger. Um, it's physically faster. The reason why you want to use a camera is because the SD card transfer is instantaneous versus any kind of cloud transfer takes time and could, could have errors. So if you understand all different parts of the business, then you don't need to buy somebody's business because you can replicate the same thing. Like, okay, let's say um, there's a store that costs, because um, at, the, at the very, very minimum, you, you, buy the, you buy a business for what it does in one year, usually like on the lowest. Uh, uh, an accounting firm, let's say they built, they have um, or this dentist that Aaron was talking about. Let's say they have half a million dollars in in sales a year. I think at the very minimum you could sell for five hundred k, right? And then hopefully the new person that buys it can can start further ahead than that they started their own dentist practice. But in eBay, I don't know because like with that same five hundred thousand that you would buy an eBay store, you could start from zero, keep your 500,000, and a year and a half later, you have the same business and it costs zero. So instead of, um, it, it doesn't, like if you took the, you could take them, maybe you would pay the person five grand for the institutional knowledge of how to run it and then do it yourself. If you really wanted an eBay business, but, Juanita is saying, what's the difference? What's the purpose of selling it off to someone versus just selling everything and walking away? In theory, your business would be worth more um, with everything and instead of just the inventory. So let's say you have, for me, my 8,000 item store was 70 to 100 sales a day. Um, that's um, worth, I don't know, 50K, 40 or 50,000 just liquidating the inventory. I could just start over. That's what I did, right? Sold all my inventory, closed it fresh start. Um, in theory, I could sell my store, which already has 70 to 100 listings a day, and it already has the employee, right? The only thing that it's missing is the um, supplier, right? And I could introduce the new buyer to the supplier. What would they pay for that? Your business does like a million dollars a year, 200K profit. What does the person buy it for? What are they willing to pay for that business? Like, I don't have any property. It's in a storage unit. If you know the, like, would they pay $100,000 for my business? And actually, because my company set up as a corporation, eBay wouldn't even know. I would just transfer the corporation to them. They don't need, they don't need a, um, eBay wouldn't even notice. There'd be no change on the back end. Um, Is there another way to price items other than comps sold? Yes, Linda. So um, yesterday, someone asked a really good question. Um, she said she bought a bunch of Hallmark um, items at Goodwill for 99 cents. And Hallmark was selling them for 30 to $40. But on eBay, the comps said $4, right? So you can use Hallmark to price your items. But so she's like, well, if Hallmark can sell them for 30 to 40, I'm going to try and sell them for $13.99 to $24.99. And she didn't sell any. So you can choose another way to price items other than comps, but you'll probably have really bad results because if you pick something other than what the market is on eBay, it won't be accurate. Um, if Z is saying, if you have no brand or customer base, you're selling under eBay's name. That's true. Um, okay, so B is saying it's worth it because it cash flows. Yes, but then you also lose the cash flow of the purchase. I get what you're saying, but um, I just don't know. I think it's very risky to buy an eBay store. I don't know if I would do it. Maybe you buy the... Um, Maybe Tech should sell his store as a, um, maybe he should go public so everyone can buy a piece of it. Nico says, the person that shops on Hallmark is a different customer than eBay. That's true. Um, you would never purchase an eBay store. 
you also don't really know what like i've purchased people's inventory many times but buying their actual store hmm. so okay is neil still here what do you guys think what does that look like let's say i buy landon's store landon how many items are in your store uh like 740 700 seven yeah seven just a little over seven been okay like how many sales do you have a day uh, I've been at about averaging about seven or eight. Honestly, it's been picking up a little bit in the last month. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's that's one percent sell to rate. So that looks relatively healthy. So what's this business? What's this business worth? If Landon makes ten dollars profit per item, that's seventy dollars a day times three sixty five. His business makes twenty five thousand dollars a year, cash flow. What would you pay for twenty five thousand dollars in cash flow? In theory, you'd pay like 200 grand because 10% cash flow sounds awesome, but it takes you 11 years to make your money back. So I don't know if I would pay that much because that's. No. Maybe right, once I clean up, you make gold items. Let me, let me read for, Let me uh, finish cleaning up for a couple more months and it might be getting there. I'm still working on getting rid of some old stuff. I've been kind of more vigilant about my picking lately. So, but it's, it's, it's paying off for sure. Chris is 10% usually the rule of thumb for uh, calculating a, uh, the way you just did it. I think people like to make 10% on their investments. You try to. Um, I don't know though, buying an eBay store, like, because seven items a day might not sound like a lot, but seventy dollars a day cash flow is a lot. Some people can can live on. I mean, a lot of people can live on that. If you owned a business that made you seventy dollars a day, some people could. You could rom rom and retire on that. That's two grand a month. I'd That's buy into a business like that though. What's up? I'd buy into a business like that though. Like, if you had the opportunity to like give Landon $5,000 and Landon was responsible with multiplying your money by 7% or whatever over the course of three months, like that'd be fire. <laughs> like, and if he doesn't do it, he gives you back your money or you can keep it in the business, like an investment kind of thing. That'd be worth it. But it's not worth it for Landon because he wouldn't make any money off of that deal. So Aaron is saying, if you had to work in it, yeah, if you had to work in the store, it would like if I had if I bought Landon's store, right? His 700 item store, and then I had to work in it. Hell no. I'd have to like reduce the amount I pay for it because that's not passive. You know what I mean? If, if, if I bought Landon's store and it came with Landon, then maybe. Um, yeah, Paul, the experience of building a six figure store is worth more than buying a six figure store. That's true. And if you buy somebody else's store, you're not guaranteed. You're if you don't list exactly the way they list, you're not guaranteed those seven or eight sales a day. If you're not doing things exactly the way they did it. I know. The only way that um it works is if it's a true franchise model, right? Like a McDonald's. Like my wife wants to buy a McDonald's. We don't have to start over running a hamburger shop. We can just plug and play and go. Um Yeah, a, fran a franchise has built-in customers, it has built-in suppliers, um, has built-in licensing, built-in marketing. This is, you know, like when you're buying an eBay store, this is interesting, okay? Because you're buying the suppliers that work with that existing eBay seller. And you're also buying the, um, uh, what's it called? You're buying, you're buying the relationship with eBay also, which can also be removed, which is like, like, what if you bought an eBay store and then you got suspended? Right? That's, that is nothing you can do. You lose the whole thing. This is a great question. 
if you are working a nine to five and you don't want your job or and you're frustrated with your job and you have twenty thousand dollars cash a, a lot of people are in this position they don't like their nine to five and they have between five and fifty thousand dollars saved and they they want to quit and um do ebay full-time but you don't have to do that in the beginning what i would do is like um i know he's not saying this but I would definitely run an eBay store on a small scale, maybe five a day, 10 a day, while you have your full job, time job, and then um, see how it goes. And just remember when you grow, it doesn't just double. It doesn't work that way. Like if you're making $50 a day listing five, you're not guaranteed to make $500 a day if you list 50. When starting an eBay store, do you need a local business license? No, you don't. You can just use your social security number and you're by default a sole proprietor. You do not need a business license. You have a business license already when you were born, your social security number. Goodwill is priceless. It's true, but um, it doesn't transfer cleanly. Some communities require a person who sells online to have a business license. Um, you have one though, because you can go to the bank and open up an account under your name as a sole proprietorship. And that is a business license. Like you're like, you need a um, tax certificate if you wanna buy stuff without um, sales tax and then resell it. But that's different. That's not, that's that's allows you to buy tax free. Most resellers aren't buying tax free. Josie says her county requires a resale certificate to work from home. All right. I'm not sure if they know um, what are, what if you're retailing and not reselling. You still need a certificate because you're not reselling. Well, at that know. point, it's actually called a luxury tax. And you have to have a license to sell anything from your home in my county, but I not see. if you live in the city. Hmm. So she, the person talking in the chat on YouTube must be in, in a similar place as you because they're talking about some local payment to a local community type of thing. All right. Uh, what if you're having a perpetual garage sale? Technically, if you have a garage sale one time, you still have to report tax. Yeah, what state are you in, Josie? Arizona. And Arizona. we're only allowed yard sales for up to four days at a time, once a month. Very cool. Yeah, <clears throat> tax certificate and business license are different. So this is also not a legal or a CPA channel. It's not very complicated. It'll only take you a few minutes to figure it out in your state. Lots of Arizona. I would say the states with the most resellers, Florida, California, Arizona, Colorado, New York, Texas, Illinois, Minnesota, yeah, that's like most of them. I feel like if you just did those ones. Some localities won't let you do a perpetual sale. Interesting. In your city, you can only have a permit to have a yard sale max of two days and only on Saturday and Sunday. Interesting. <clears throat> Mqua says, I want to restart selling on eBay, but I lost my top rated status. Why not just get your top rated status back? It's so easy. It takes like two or three months. You can screw up and still get top rated status. And the top rated status doesn't matter that much. 
being below standard hurts you, but being top rated doesn't necessarily doesn't guarantee you anything. Um, and it doesn't mean anything to the customer either. So top rated doesn't mean anything. It should say Luke ships in an average of 36 hours and he answers customer service in an average of an hour or less. That's way better than top rated seller doesn't mean anything. Is, is it the same in the UK? You have top rated seller status? Probably. John is asking if, if uh, Canon EOS Rebel T7 is overkill. It is overkill um, because it's too much work. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. Um, it's not going to harm you. You could use it if you already have it. Um, but we recommend a Canon ELF. Standard point and shoot. But yeah, I think I think the, the retirement income is very interesting. Because most people who do eBay, I would guess, are over the age of 40. Most people. Um, so I don't know if are most people's eBay plan just to continue doing eBay forever? Because like eventually you won't be able to work on eBay. The goal is five to 10 years of selling on eBay. What is the link I go for the convention in Charlotte? <clears throat> I think it's just Google FlipCon. If you guys are in the group, next week I'm going to do the podcast from um, from North Carolina. So whoever is in the group, I'll take you out to dinner. Should we go? Um, what do you guys want to do? Is, it, is there like 10 people going? Or there might be more. Those of you that are in the group, I'll take you out to our dinner next week. I think we should go. Um, I was thinking because it's in the hotel, we just eat in the hotel. FlipCon is this event that Harry Tornado and Phoenix Resale are doing next week in Charlotte, North Carolina. And it's a big reseller hangout. So it'll be cool. I'm going to go there on Wednesday. I'm going to record the podcast there. And then um, that evening, there is a drinks and snack party that they're doing. And um, there's that. And then the next day, there is a, um, a all-day conference. And then the next day, I'm having Waffle House and flying back. Paul, what's up? Hi, how are you, Chris? Uh, I'm asking this, yeah, I'm good. I asked you this question already, but for cer certain things, I didn't get to it. Um, I want to pick up the, the. remember I was talking to you about the, um, the generator because I wanted to you. I got the big storage unit now, so I wanted to put it in the storage unit. Yep. I was looking at them, but I didn't remember what you said, so I was confused with the wattage because I'm not used to it. Um, what do you think would be best to get, like, for, for it again? So I just pick it up today. Like a 200 watt? I would say 200 to 500 watts. Okay, 200 to, yeah, because I have a um, the, the the printer, the, the, what do you call the printer? We use to print the label. The label printer? Yeah. yeah, I have the label printer and then I have the a little printer that I used to use in my um, tractor trailer. So okay. I probably, I use that for, I will use that for Pashmark to print like thank you, pay something to say thank you or stuff. So you think that that would be good too for that and the computer like the two hundred are probably the five. Um, I would get the biggest one you can afford. That way you don't have to recharge it as often. 
Okay, so the biggest one you would say, is, and then the brand that you, because I was looking at the YouTube channel in the description there, but I didn't see you have uh, that one up anymore. Uh, uh, yeah, I think, oh, it's, um, I'll put the link in here again. It, it's the Yet. I use the Yeti, but they're cheaper ones. It doesn't matter the brand that much. Oh, it don't matter the brand, it's just the wattage. Yeah. Okay, so you said probably, probably you think like 500 then, because I don't want to go too big. Okay. That all was right. Good. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Yeah, 200 to 500 should be fine. 500 is plenty. Um, so if you buy an eBay store setup, it's worth 40 to 50% of the total retail value plus assets. Um, I don't think so. I think if you had money to buy an eBay store and you wanted an eBay store, you would just start your own. It doesn't make sense to buy an eBay store for cash flow. It's way too risky. You have to hold, there's so much you don't know. You don't know this, how quality this. Okay, I'll tell you when I would buy an eBay store. If the supply contract was a contract if i had a contract guaranteeing me supply and I, it came with the workers then then i would i would consider buying one if it doesn't come with a contract for the supply coming in then how can you even do it it's so hard no they don't cindy there's no fumes produced by they're um gigantic lithium batteries um You've worked in manufacturing and physical labor most of your life, running an eBay store as a vacation. Yeah, definitely. Um, yep, yep. Pretty straightforward. Any other questions? I've seen people at Starbucks that plug in their generator. And I'm like, come on, bro. Hope you're buying 10 copies. I hate that. I hate people who go to an establishment, plug in their laptop and don't buy anything. It's super annoying to me. I, I want to just spill my copy on their laptop. It's just totally, <laughs> I just don't, I think it's totally rude to go into someone's business and plug in your laptop and not buy anything. I, don't I, get agree. It. I agree. I agree. Even using a restroom somewhere. Yeah, why? <laughs> why, can't you, why, can't you just, why can't you just buy something? Right. A soda, anything. Yeah, I agree. Um, and uh, Chris, I wanted to mention something about the generators. Um, I don't know if people know inverters is a thing because I camp all the time. So we get inverters so they're quieter. Yep. Just to mention to Paul. Yeah. And then... Um, what is it? What's that? Um, I'm sorry, the hardware company that has, they have good inverters. A lot of people use them for camping and they're really. Harbor uh, Freight. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, Harbor Freights. Yeah. The Predators. Yeah. They're, they're predators good. are really the good. champions. Yeah. And Honda always, but yeah. Apparently, if you live in an area with natural disaster, you should just have 10 or 20 Honda generators because they, they sell really well when disaster hits. So, yeah. <laughs> That's like the, the Cadillac. Yeah, it is. It's because they're the only ones left. Yeah. After a hurricane. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. When after our hurricane, when I was back there, um, when we went to Home Depot, those were the only generators they had. Yeah, because they're the, the most out. expensive, I'm assuming. No. Oh, they're not. No, but they oh. use the most gasoline for the gasoline powered ones. And the ones that charge took charge so slowly, you would have one day of generator, two days of charging. Usually the Hondas are more expensive where I am. Yeah, they're always more expensive. Yeah. In Cape Coral, everything is expensive. Oh, okay. Let's see. Have you ever heard of resellers that buy generators after a big storm and then resell them we definitely we have that here 
yeah um i have a goal zero or i did and it was awesome it was awesome yeah paul and the jackeries are great i have a jackery too those work awesome there's also people who buy generators before the hurricane and then when home depot was sold out they put a sign in their front yard that says generators for sale yeah Very that's, that's what paul was talking about that um and you buy them on tax-free weekend too so no what i was talking about is um you wait until after people start posting them on facebook after the storm because a bunch of people will buy new brand new generators and just use them one time and, oh, and then they're like well i'll never yeah. i'll never need them again and then right. they sell oh, it right. you buy them at half the price and then you resell them yeah just like wow. the RV craze during the pandemic, everybody's starting to sell their RVs now. Yeah. Yeah. Or you, you don't have a place to store your generator. If you live in a small place, who wants that gas smell and thing sitting inside their whatever? Yeah, I mean, it's just like, yeah, yeah, that's so that, that happens. Yeah, it's so funny because you can't, you really can't find one at certain times of the year, like when the storms are about to hit around here you go and, and Home Depot is like, oh, we sold our last one. And then and then a couple months later, you see them all over social media, selling them cheap. Tech has an RV. I bet you guys didn't know that. Yep, didn't know that. Love RV. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense if you're gonna go to the flea market and like hang out at 4 a.m., you know, you can get there early, you know, put your stuff there. I just can't see tech in an out. RV. Can't see hmm? it. I can't see tech in an RV. He has one. <laughs> Does he use it? He right, uses exactly. It. That's what he uses it for work. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> now that makes sense. <laughs> How do you use it for work? What do you... He uses it for his cruise, and then um, when when the flea market was heavy, he actually uses it to fill up. Because like. Oh, so it but he would he would buy inventory fill it up in the the rv and then drive that drive it back. home wow that's that's pretty sharp because it doesn't fit in my car Smart. so i have to make a couple trips um i'm updating the calls right now updating um tech tuesday call I'm, how late did it go yesterday Let's see. Getting a shoot call. I can ask a question, a question real quick while we're transitioning. I was thinking right. like talking about rebringing the Hallmark thing. Uh, and when Tech said last night, you know, somebody, she also asked about when eBay recommends what you price it at, you know, uh, like when you're on the mobile. And I know we've a lot of times talked about uh, don't go by that. But like at the same time, even Tech said, well, that's probably could be what it was worth. And if they're recommending that, it might be a little low, but it's probably close to, you know, probably right and close to right. At least. But what is that pulling off of? Because it made me think from where it's Hallmark, like it, during Christmas time, is it obviously going to, you know, say you should well, it's just higher? based on previous solds. In in previous results, they they think match. Okay, but it doesn't just go back like three months, or are they just kind of matching it off the last year in that time of the year, I guess. You know, I, I don't know what time period it's based on. It's based off of the three. It's the it's the therapy thing. That's it. The thing is, it's um, like it's using things that it thinks is similar to what you typed in. So like if I type in Nike Air Force One, like my title says Nike Air Force One white, it'll look for other listings that had similar words in it, right? And if you look at the actual listings that they're pulling up, some of them are the same thing that you have, while other ones are like 
different in one way or another. So like it averages all those prices together and goes, okay, this is how much this item must be worth. Like, while when we're doing comp research, we kind of use like a median kind of thing, or we go a little bit higher than a median. So that's yes, why so depending on how much variation your item could have, that exactly. could really be way off. Where exactly. if it's a kind of a rare item, it might you might be able to trust a little bit, a little yeah. bit more. That makes sense. If, if you put in like J. Crew shirt or something, like it's a, or your shirt's special in some way, it's going to compare your special shirt to 